Good afternoon. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com, and I am going over and reviewing a play for you today. This is actually this was yesterday's play, but I'm going to review it today. This is dull. The gap was on the 13th of March. I still like this chart lower. Actually, I thought it might get lower today, but it, it's just not going anywhere today. It's just kind of laying here. It needed to hold under 1083 today to be a short. Um, it did run up, it looks like, to $11 and booped up, and then you could have shorted it there. Actually, this, you could have shorted this up in this area today. I wanted this in an ideal world to stay under 1083 when it didn't do that. I didn't do anything with it. But you could have shorted this today, actually, up at $11. It's not going to go over this 50 right now. The gap's going to hold intact. You never know if the next day it's going to follow through hard red, if it doesn't follow through hard, hard red on the day of the gap, or if it's going to be the third day. You, you can never be sure, but let's look at it. So this was on earnings on the 13th. It was sloppy in the morning. We'll go look at it. It actually ended up playing out fairly nicely as the day went on. It was tough in the morning because of the tail. You can tell, geez, look at these tails over here. I didn't even see these before. Yeah. This stock is traded heavily, heavily, heavily by machines. The only thing that can make those kind of tails is machines, not people. I can tell that now when I see something trading. It's, it's incredible. I can tell when something is being traded more by machines than by people. Everything is traded by both for the most part. But the interesting thing is that I can tell when things are being traded more by machines, and this stock is. Way too many jimungus tails. People can't make these tails. Was a nice gap, though. In the morning, I said, be careful, it was thin. Just make sure this gap is real, I said to everybody. And then the thinness played out in this tail in the morning. We'll go look at the chart. This is still lower, by the way. Actually, let's just quick look at that before I look at yesterday. Um, the first target on this is 1030, 1020, you know, $10. $10. I, I think this comes into 950, though, as a swing trade. I think this really comes into 950 as a nice swing trade down lower, and it's going to follow through. It could have broken to $10 yesterday, but this was actually a big move for the stock because of the extension. The extension was almost a dollar. You remember, a big day on this. You can't count this big red bar over here. This was not normal. All right, it was a $2 bar. It was unusual for the stock. I don't know what happened that day. All right, let's look at the day of the gap. Hold on. Okay, so this was on the 13th. This was the craziness in the morning low volume right away. So, you know, if you were in this here, it was not enough volume. It triggered, but then the stop had to be over the high of the day. It would have blown through. You could have retaken it. I, I saw this, but it was so, it was, just wasn't enough people. I didn't do anything with this here. Rallied up. This is a big rally, but it rallied up right to an area. You could have shorted it right here and taken it down for a nice, hard move. Really, really look at that. Actually, that is really... Really, the risk to reward on that was much better than, than I thought. Now that I now that I look at it, much better than I thought. Where did that rally up to? Let me just see. Eleven twenty. Low is eleven seventeen and a half. High is eleven twenty. There it is. Here. Oh, there it is. The open of this bar is eleven seventeen. Right there. Machines trade using numbers, not the candlesticks. So the bottom line is all these numbers in here are very significant when a stock is being traded by machines. And I realize more and more that we have to trade with numbers no matter what, more than anything. And, and, and you've got to use the daily chart. So it ran up hard first and was an immediate short into the number, into that previous bar. You take it here down, you got to be out for a drop. you got to be out of this whole thing into this drop, into this reversal time. 9.45, it ran two minutes into it. It had a very nice play that set up on the 15 minute in the late morning and again in the afternoon. And look how perfect this one was in the afternoon. Let's look at the morning one first. This already a drop down here. So if you take this play around 10 45, 11 o'clock reversal time, you have to figure low of the day is your first target. Okay, so you'd be in that. You can chunk away a play like this. This is late for me to get in a play, but it was a nice entry here under 80. It ran down in here. You had 25 cents you could have made on it. Well, if you got it in the 15, actually, 
He only made 15 cents. We'll look at the one to see where the better entry was, but target was originally the low of the day. You know, the original target is low of the day, but you would have had to suffer through this tail up here, which went through your price because the entry was 80 and the 15, but it, it didn't do anything wrong. You could have put your stopping tail right over this and taken it down in here, added on this trade, put the stop over 83 and taken it down. It did break the low of the day, but did a double bottom right at 1050. Boom, boom, you're out. Double bottom out, double bottom out, boom, doom, out. Reversal time, 2 o'clock, broke under the low, but only barely by 5 pennies. And this is what it did. It went to the target. The first target was the tail of this bottoming tail here with the green head on the 28th, 10.50. That was all it wanted to do in the day. And it did it perfectly. Once again, machines, the machines had it out at that price where it bounced it in a bubble, double bottom. Let's look. It's around 2.15. The double bottom was in the 15 minute. You would have had to read this carefully on the 15 at double bottom, not on the one. But you should be at one penny over the previous bottom's low and into a first target on a rally and a reversal time if you're in that trade since the 11 o'clock or the 12.30 time frame. You're up nice profit with the risk to reward entry. You've got to take something off. More and more and more as time goes on and I trade. I realize being specific with entries and numbers and setups and time of day and everything else in the gap and strategically playing things with numbers is the way to trade with moves. You take a trade, you book the money, you're out. You take a good trade, you book the money, you're out. Staying in one thing to squeeze every penny or to get to target on one move and never booking the money, you know, all of that stuff is nonsense. It just doesn't work on a consistent basis because sometimes things don't go to the target. The target on this was $10. And if you stayed in this through a bounce, you got hurt in the afternoon, bounced out through your price. And you could have even got hurt anytime something bounces, even if you're trailing it, because the bottom line is, if you're going by ours, you would have had to squeeze everything out of this down here at the bottom if you took this late play here. Now, I don't know if you were in this up here, but your risk to reward here, you would have needed all of that down into the 1050. Otherwise, you would have made a one-to-one. -one. If you got taken out of here at 60 and you got in at 71, you only made 10 cents on a 10 cents risk. Do you see what I'm saying? So the reality is that, that, that these setups, when they go and they work for solid moves, you can play them for whatever you can, but don't miss your exits. If you had $10 a, as a target with this, you didn't get there. What was the clue? Double bottom on the 15 minute, and you should have had this bottom and tail as a target. And when it, you have this as a target, you have this as a number, you did a double bottom at a reversal time, you take the whole trade off. I really think you just got to take the whole trade off. How much do you want out of this thing? It had everything to give. Are you going to get pushed through this kind of rally into the close? No. It's just, you know, this can be ugly. I wanted this to hold here today, but it didn't do it. It, it did come in, though. Ran up to $11, came in. I just think this is just going to sit here. Wait for this to fall again and break under $10.50, and then it's still short. This was dull from March 13th. Bearish gap down. Good gap. And this is Melissa with thestockswish.com. If you're interested in learning how to trade gaps, please feel free to contact me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I'm doing the next Golden Gap class on March 23rd and 24th. Feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in signing up. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day.